Hey guys, today I'm coming to you with Rebellion, how to play. Uh, what I've done is I'm going to start with how to set up the game board, how to get started, and I'm going to walk you through basically how you play. So, the, the Imperial player is generally going to sit, or is always going to sit on this side, next to Coruscant, the Imperial player's home world. The Rebel player is going to sit on the far side. Uh, there's a couple of things, there's a couple of reasons for that. For one, this is the Imperial player's deployment track, or, or their build queue. Uh, the Rebel player has cards that go over here, as well as the Rebel base areas over here. Um, the Imperial player has a section for it, his or her own cards over here. So, it has to be on those sides. The advantage, I mean, like, you know, your, their, their text is upside down, so the Rebel player is just going to have to deal with that. But that's not a big deal. The point of this game is for the Empire to branch out and try and find the Rebel base. The Rebel, uh, the Rebel wins by, making, by basically surviving. Uh, a certain amount of time. So a quick look at the game board, we have almost every known system, or most every popular system in the Star Wars universe. We've got Tatooine, Endor, Hoth, Naboo, you've got prequel worlds in here also, uh, Mon Calamari, Nal Hutta, uh, Dantooine, uh, Ilum, where they get all their lightsaber crystals, you got uh, Ryloth, you got all these different worlds, right? Uh, they're divided into different regions. Uh, which are separated by thick orange boundaries. See, each system itself is here and is adjacent to certain other systems. Uh, but, the, but these lines are drawn in certain ways that not everything like Bespin isn't adjacent to Dagobah because the line goes right here. Um, there are thicker, double, like, thicker uh, orange lines here. This means this is not adjacent. So Mustafar and Utapu here are not adjacent. For it to go from here to here, you would have to stop at Dagobah and then to Utapu. And this is usually for the outer rim, you'll see these thicker orange lines, just to prevent certain adjacencies. So, um, there are, you know, this is all, these are all considered one region, these are all considered one region, uh, this is all considered one region, the inner systems are all considered one region, so on and so forth, these thick orange lines. That's referenced by certain cards, uh, there are certain benefits to controlling all of, uh, all the planets in one region, uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Now, additionally, there are two types of worlds. There's populous worlds, those worlds that have a hex on them, and there's remote worlds that do not have a hex on them. Okay, uh, so Tatooine is a remote world. Uh, Alderaan is a populous world. Uh, and these hexes basically are where we can establish control. If the rebel player, if this is a rebel world, loyal to the rebel rebellion, uh, it'll have a little rebel symbol on it. If it's an imperial world, loyal to the empire, it'll have an imperial symbol on it. Or if there are imperial troops landed on a world, it can we can flip this over and it can be subjugated, which is almost as good as being loyal, but not quite. Um, um, we, have, we have different symbols next to these worlds as well. And we have little numbers here. So if we, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the boards, okay? Because <clears throat> these symbols are relevant to what type of unit they can create. So here looking at the rebels board you'll see that um, a, tr a blue triangle can represent either an x-wing, a y-wing, or a rebel transport. Um, a blue circle represents a Corellian corvette and a blue square, squares are always the best, represents the Mon Calamari cruiser. So what does this tell us? It means blue icons always mean ships, uh, orange icons always mean ground. Right? And so triangle means a rebel trooper, Circle means air speeder, more powerful. And then square, they have two square options, a shield generator or ion cannon. All right, um, just for FYI, just a quick look over what everything means here. Um, this means this X-Wing rolls a black die, one black die, the number one in there, and he has one health. He is considered to have black health. I'll explain that later when we talk about combat. The Y-Wing rolls a red die, but he is considered to have black health. The Rebel Transport no, rolls no dice in combat, but he has two health, and it's red. Typically, red health is for big things, and black health is for small things. Okay? Uh, for the Imperial side, the TIE Fighters, for example, have black health, and the Stormtroopers have black health, but everything else in the Empire is big and has red health. So all the ships are big, they have red health, or all the big ships are big. Big ships are big, imagine that. Um, you're on the ground, your Rebel Troopers have black health, the air speeders and the shield generators and ion cannons each have re uh, red health, okay? And then it has to do with when we're rolling dice, what hits what, okay? Um, 
Now the airspeeder, for example, will roll one black die and one red die when he's in combat. Um, the Mon Calamari cruiser will roll one black die and two red dice. So he's got a little bit of firepower on him, and he has four health. Okay, so I've kind of talked to you about the combat stats that are represented by this sheet. Um, there are some other symbols here. Um, the numbers here, this rebel transport means it can carry four units. All right, four things that require to be carried. And those are represented by this little chain symbol. Rebel troopers and airspeeders both need to be carried. They can be carried on a rebel transport. The X-Wing doesn't have a chain. The X-Wing has its own hyperdrive. It can transport, it can fly from system to system. Doesn't need to be carried. Same thing with the Y-Wing. Um, the shield generator and the ion cannon each have this little anchor system. They stay where they, they stay put. They can't be carried. They can't be moved. All right. So that's what all of this stuff means. Also over here we have the leader pool. Uh, this is where we're going to put our leaders. Leaders are people like Princess Leia. So Princess Leia will go on our leader pool. We're going to start with four leaders for each side. Okay. And Princess Leia has a couple of symbols there. She's got the, like the espionage symbol, the diplomacy symbol, and the strength symbol, or might. Um, and she's also got orange there. I mean, she's a ground general, and she has one, uh, blue, one blue and a one orange. And those deal with tactic cards, how many tactic cards we draw when we get into battle. So if she initiated a battle for the rebellion, you'd get to draw one um, space tactic card and one ground tactic card. And tactic cards are extra little bonuses that you can play when you're in battle. All right, let me put those back. Um, let me, let's just, for consistency, let's look at the Empire side real quick. Um, we have the same thing here, except the TIE Fighter doesn't have a hyperdrive, so the TIE Fighters need to be transported. And we've got our little Gazanti assault carriers that can transport four things. Um, now, the only thing that's interesting is here is like an ATST, an ATAT, and a Stormtrooper all kind of take up one. So a Gazanti can move four ATATs or four Stormtroopers. So, uh, you know, it's not a perfect world. It really should be kind of two ATATs, but uh, what are you going to do? And the Death Star can move eight things. Death Star, the Death Star is a special unit. It can't be blown up, right? It has a zero there or a dash. It's got a four red uh so it rolls four red dice again red dice typically hit things that are big so the death star is not going to attack an x-wing but it you know or chances are it's not going to hit there's a way for it to hit an x-wing but it's probably not going to all right you also have some things on the side here this says mission deck um action deck and stuff and that's kind of just an, uh, a way we can organize our stuff all right so you're going to look now we've got all of our different uh, generals and, 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 and leaders, you know, an admiral or a general or whatever, they're all called leaders, all right? So, like, General Taggy here, and I've heard people call him Tag, but I always called him Taggy. This, he's one of your starting generals, or starting leaders. Um, Moff Jirjirad is not a starting leader. He's got this little recruit symbol here. This recruit symbol means it's uh, something we can do when we recruit, and on certain turns, they're recruit turns. So he's somebody that you can gain. But the Imperial player is always going to start with Vader, Taggy, the Emperor, and Tarkin. Okay, so you can set those on your boards. The Rebel player is always going to start with Leia, Mon Mothma, Rykian, and Dodonna. All right. Um, now we've also got that same recruit symbol on some of our action cards here. And what we can do is find the action cards that don't have a recruit symbol and we can separate those, and that's what you should do. And you're going to start with some of these. Now, these these action cards um, are helpful when we were going to recruit people. But first thing you want to do, separate all the ones that don't have a little recruit thing on them. Okay. So now that we've done that, we also have to go through our mission deck. And for the rebels, it looks like that. And for the imperials, it looks kind of like that. Okay, I'll start with the rebels first because they're simpler. Um, every each side is going to have four cards that have this little curved arrow symbol on the bottom, and what that means is that these are your starting four cards. And anytime you play these cards, they don't get discarded; they go back into your hand at the end of your turn. So you're going to have these same four cards every turn, and they represent basically the most basic actions you need to play the game, such as sabotaging the Imperials, or building alliances, in other words, 
I'm going to try and win over Mandalore for the Rebellion, you know, and you can either do that or you can be contested and do that, and, you know, maybe it's, maybe Leia shows up and Darth Vader's there to also argue, you know, their case. So there's different, you know, those are staple things, and each turn you're going to draw two more mission cards that'll give you different things you can do, maybe more advanced things you can do, maybe more powerful versions of the same things you can do, and... That's our mission cards. Now the Imperial side, if you're just getting the game set up, you're going to notice they also have four mission cards that have these. Just, just for, for reference, the regular mission cards don't have that symbol at the bottom, right? Um, but they're going to have a couple of, they have a deck for projects. Okay, now this is the Imperial player's very special projects, like building Super Star Destroyers and constructing Death Stars and, and things of that nature. These cards look very much like the mission cards, but they have this little star here in the bottom right. So you'll want to, they should already be separated right out of the box, but just in case maybe your little brother shuffled all these cards together not knowing, go through and make sure you got all of these out, okay? Uh, because these are very, very special. And you can't just draw these whenever you want to, you have to play a special card to get these. Oh, by the way, that's one of your starting cards, allows you to get those, okay? But uh, it, you have to do it deliberately. But they're very powerful, especially like the Construct Death Star or Construct Super Star Destroyer or the Fire the Super Laser. Yes, you have to get a special card to fire the Super Laser. And by the way, when you do, when you do fire the Super Laser, it's awesome because you get to put this over that system. The system is not there anymore. It's gone. It's gone. Um, and you and you only blow up Rebel units that are on the ground. So if you, have, if you have Imperial units on the ground, and you blow that up, they survive. They're basically just on board the Death Star at that point. It's pretty cool stuff. All right, so we've got, we've got these guys, right? We've got our starting four cards ready. Um, and I've got to go through the Imperial side, he's, his action deck. He's got three starting cards. I'm sorry, no, he's got four. Four starting cards, and all the rest you have the Recruit symbol. Uh, the Imperial, or the Rebel player has six. But we're not going to start with all of those. We're going to start with two random uh, action deck cards. And these are special types of cards that will... And, and they, they, they each have a special... They kind of say what they do, but they also have a timing. Maybe this one's... A, I can play this one at the start of combat. And I, oh, I guess me three extra tactic cards, right? Uh, but they have special things that they can do. And they also typically have somebody's face on them. And what's really cool about that is when it comes time to recruit, uh, I get to pick a card. And, oh, this one has two people on it. So I can draw this guy or this guy, right? Uh, and this guy, I don't even remember. It's Jan something. Um, what is it? Let's see what his name is. His name is Janus Grigetus. Okay. I think he was uh, in Empire Star or Return of the Jedi or hanging out with the Emperor, kind of off to the side. Didn't have any lines. So you draw this card, right? And you can either pick one of those two. You can add Boba Fett to your leader pool or him to your leader pool. You're only, only going to get to recruit four times. So you're not going to be able to use all of your leaders every turn. So there's a lot of replayability here. All right. So we've got all of these cards set up. There's another pile of cards I need to show you, and that's the objective cards. Now this is I talked about the projects cards for the for the Imperials. Well, the objective cards are the Rebels version. However, they don't have the same back as the mission cards. They have a Roman numeral one on the first five. A Roman numeral two on the second five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, yeah. And then a Roman numeral three on the third five. So what you really need to do is you need to shuffle all the threes and shuffle all the twos and shuffle all the ones. And they need to be stacked with all the threes in the bottom, all the twos in the middle, and all the ones on top. Now, these are the bread and butter for the rebellion. You kind of can't win the game without these. I mean, you, you potentially can, but you won't. Um, and basically, these represent things that the rebel does, like significant events that the rebel does to inc increase their influence, all right, or the reputation, I should say. The, the key word is reputation. So, for example, combat. Oh, rebel assault. Play after a star destroyer or super star destroyer has been destroyed in a combat that you initiated. So they they tell you when you can do them. Some of them, uh, some of them are really important, like the Death Star plans. This is the only way you can blow up a Death Star, it's with the Death Star plans. And you have to do a combat where there's a Death Star, you have to have at least a, a one fighter left, and then you have a chance to make an attack run, and maybe you blow up the Death Star. It's happened to me in every game I've played, they blew up at least one Death Star. 
cool thing about this is you can build more than one Death Star. I had two at the same time one time. It was awesome. Um, and the reason these are numbered this way is because the, all the number ones are, represent things that are likely to happen earlier in the game. The twos are mid-game conditions, and, the, and then the threes are late-game stuff. And so it just wouldn't make sense for you to get the three uh, on the first turn. Um, there are ways that you can kind of manipulate these. The Rebels have cards they can go in here and like reorder some of the cards and, and dig through this deck quicker. Uh, but that's... And, and each one will give either one or two, or they, they say how many points. And so you have this tracker here. I don't think I've talked about this tracker yet. And the last thing we're going to do is a probe deck, because that's like one of the coolest parts. So this tracker here, there's two tokens. There's this little crosshairs type token right here. And we've got the rebellion symbol, okay? The rebellion symbol starts at 14. And this starts at 1. There's a reason it starts at 14. But basically, at, and each turn, this will advance. So we'll increase, this is like the turn counter. Turn 2, turn 3, turn 4, turn 5, so on and so forth. The game ends in victory for the Rebellion if this and this are ever on the same circle. Okay? So, uh, so it, the, re, the, the Rebels want to gain reputation and move this down so that they can win maybe 8 turns. Right? or seven turns, or even six turns, which would be really, really cool. Um, the Imperial player can, you know, just has to find the Rebel base, but they're hoping to stall the, the Rebels so that they have like 13 turns to do it. Uh, typically, this is going to move a couple of times, this is going to move a couple of times, and then by then the game is going to be uh, figured out, and then there's only a certain amount of time left. But that's kind of how these, this works. This mission tracker also tells you a couple of things that are going to happen during gameplay. Um, even numbered turns are build turns, and they have a little build symbol here with the wrench. Uh, and the first four turns are recruit turns, and they have that little badge, the little medal, which is the recruit symbol. And on those turns, you'll draw an action card. You get a chance to recruit somebody who is here, and um, and that's you know, and those are marked. But then, like on turn seven, you don't do anything. Okay, uh, but on like the first, like on turns two and four, you're going to build and you're going to recruit. So that's really cool. Um, I'll talk about building here in a second. But before that, I want to talk about the probe deck. Okay? So we're getting set up, right? You're going to have this. This is, I think, our last pile of cards I haven't talked about yet. Well, I haven't gone over the tactic cards in, 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 in a whole lot of detail, but I'll do them more when we get into combat. The probe deck has a card for all of these systems out here, except for Coruscant. I don't think we have a card for Coruscant. Some of them are neutral. They don't have any, any symbol on them. Some of them have the Imperial symbol on them. And some of them have the Rebel symbol on them. And that's really just for setting up the game. For relative balance. Um, but the idea is... The Rebel player is going to pick a card in here that they, are, that they want the Rebel base to be on. So let's say, this, well, let's say the Rebel base is going to be on Hoth. The Rebel player will take the Hoth card out, put it over here... That's the, and now this zone is the rebel base. The probe deck goes back here, it's shuffled. At the end of each turn, the Imperial player gets to draw two probe deck cards and say, hmm, he's not on Tatooine and he's not on Mon Calamari, right? So they know that these two are not the rebel base by process of elimination. There are cards that will allow the Imperial player to draw extra probe deck cards. And so it can allow you to call the bluff of the, uh, of the rebel player if maybe they look like they're trying to defend Dantooine, and you eventually draw the Dantooine card, you're like, ah, it's not there. And so you'll go somewhere else. So that's cool. Um, what we, uh, let's see, what else do we have here? Um, building. Okay. When we're going to build... Here, let me put a couple of markers out here. Okay. All right. Oh, let's put one of these, too. All right. No, I don't want it there. I want it on Corellia. All right, so I put a couple of lo uh, markers out here. So my Jito is loyal to the Empire. Mandalore is loyal to the Empire. Corellia's got a troop on there, so he's subjugated. Um, so he's still Imperial, but he's not loyal to the Empire. So they're all not working as hard as they could be working. And then the Rebels have, let's say, Felucia and Mon Calamari. Just in this example. Um... What you're going to do is you're going to add up all of the units that you can produce. And you do that by looking at these two tracks, right? So let's start here, Mandalore. I get one, uh, one orange triangle and one blue triangle. So that means one stormtrooper, 
which is meant by the orange triangle, and the blue triangle is TIE Fighter. So I'll take a Stormtrooper and a TIE Fighter, and it's got this number one here. That means I go to my build track, and I put both of those on the number one. Okay. Now, um, I've also got my Jito, which has a blue triangle, which is TIE Fighter, and then a orange square, which is an AT-AT. All right, so my Jito, basically, for me, they can make me AT-ATs and TIE Fighters. And they have, that has the number two. These guys will go on track two. All right. And then I've got Corellia, which has blue triangle and blue square. So they could make me TIE Fighters and Star Destroyers, which is awesome, right? Corellia can make me some Star Destroyers. However, if it's subjugated, I only get the first of the two. All right. So I can... They'll only make me, make me TIE Fighters unless I win them over with loyalty. And so I need to send like the Emperor out there to try to try to convince them to be loyal. And once I do that, and this turns loyal, then I could make both. All right, and then I would take those, let's say they was loyal, I'd put those on number three. All right, the Rebel player will do the same thing. Um, rebel player for, you know, they may have Rebel Troopers they can add here. They can get the Mon Calamari Cruisers at Mon Calamari, imagine that. Uh, now, for Triangle, they have three options for Blue Triangle. They have an X-Wing, a Y-Wing, or a Rebel Transport. So whenever you have more than one of the same thing, and it's really only going to happen for the Rebellion, they can choose which one they want to add. So you may want an X-Wing, you may want a Y-Wing, you may want one of each if you have, because you also have the Rebel Base. The Rebel Base, while it is not revealed, also gives you um, a Rebel Trooper and uh, a Blue Triangle, either X-Wing, Y-Wing, or a Rebel Transport. So, they would, Rebel Player would do the same thing, add all of those, and then once we've added everything to the builds queue, everything slides down one. So the ones come off, the twos go down to one, and the threes go down to two. Okay? Um, now that happens every turn, the sliding down happens every turn, even if it's not a build turn, but only on build turns, so those are the even numbered turns, do we actually add stuff to the build queue. Now, once everything that comes off, you put in your hand, and you can start dropping anywhere that you have loyalty or troops, right? But, no, I'm sorry, you, you, not where you just have troops, but you have to drop it where you have loyalty. But, for example, there is a, the, the offshoot case that, um, that maybe I own my Jito, but the Rebel player has an X-Wing in space there. Well, if that's the, if that's the case... I can't drop anything there. Now the chances of this happening are kind of slim because you do both ground and space battles at the same time, but it, this would be the result of maybe a big battle where the rebels had more, you know, they, they had more stuff in, the, in, in space and I had more stuff on the ground, and so it was kind of a stalemate. In that case, I can't deploy stuff here. But that's usually not going to happen. Usually, you're only going to have Imperials in one system and only rebels in another system because when you fight, you fight to the death until in or in, or if somebody retreats. So it's not like you can both have. Uh, I couldn't have an X-wing and a Tie fighter in the same system at the end of a turn. They'd have to keep fighting, or or one would have to retreat. So I can add stuff to wherever I have loyalty, but the condition is I can I can't add more than two of any uh, two units to the same system. So if I had, let's say I had four TIE Fighters, or five TIE Fighters, rather. I could do two here in my Jito, two here in Mandalore, and one here in Corellia, right? And that's me deploying all my stuff. And it could be any two. If I had, let's say, three Star Destroyers that all came off the build queue, I could go, you know, I could go two Star Destroyers there, and one to Star Destroyer here. Or one, one, and one, right? Something like that. And that's how that works. All right, well, now let's talk about combat. I'll put a couple of uh, a couple of things here on Dathomir, okay? And so I've got a Star Destroyer, two Tie Fighters, a Gazanti, an ATST, and a and a and a Stormtrooper here on Dathomir. And I'm gonna give the Rebels some presence in Yavin. Yes, yes I am. All right, so the Rebels have a Mon Cal, an X-Wing, a Y-Wing, a Rebel Transport. I should have done a simpler. Let's do a smaller battle. 
Let's do a smaller battle. I don't want... Yeah, I don't want this Storm Destroyer there. Right? Okay. Smaller battle. Less dice. Okay. So whoever initiates combat, and, and, and you'll do it with these guys, um, I'm just going to show you basically what combat would look like and why I'm doing what. So I would say, all right, I'm activating here. Darth Vader move. I have to drop a leader wherever I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to move people. I'll move them in there, and then and then we have to have a combat. Now, if if the rebel player doesn't have a leader here, they can put one in there. Let's say we put Dodonna in there uh, for the for his bonuses. Okay. So then uh, we can we look at both of these and say, okay. So Vader's got two for space and three for ground. Dodonna's got two for space and one for ground. So we each draw tactic cards. That's the first thing you do, right? I'll go first, Vader, get his two tactic cards. Um, let me get two different kinds here, because I want you to see. All right. All right, so, so this is kind of what the tactic cards look like. Shoot, that's not the one I wanted. There we go. Some of them have a lightsaber symbol on them, and some of them don't. But they all say what they do. This one would deal two damage to one ship. This one would let me re-roll two of my dice. Okay, I'll explain why that lightsaber symbol is relevant. So what I'm, first thing I'm going to do, we're having a combat. We're going to we do. I put my ground troops there on the ground next to his ground troops, and I have my space stuff. Okay, I've got a Gazanti and two ties against the transport and an X-wing and a Y-wing. I need to figure out how many dice I'm going to roll. We start with the space combat first. Um, I've got two Tie fighters and they each roll one black die, so I'm going to roll two black die. And I have the assault carrier or the Gazanti, which rolls one black die and one red die. Okay. Now remember, I talked about they have different types of health, right? Small things have black health, big things have red health. That's when this is going to come into effect. Um, and, and I will roll my dice. Okay? Well, that was awful. So let's not do that. Let me give you something a little more. Good. Oh, and just for the record, every die has two blacks or blank sides, um, two of these little stay on target sides, one lightsaber side, and one explosion side. Okay? So what these sides mean is after it's, roll, uh, after it's thrown, so here, I get basically one of every kind of different result. All right. This means I, I've got one black damage, one red damage. A die with this face means it can hit anything, either a red or black. Okay. And then this lightsaber card means no damage. Light, lightsaber face means no damage. Uh, instead, you can use it to either draw a tactic card or spend it to play a tactic card that has this lightsaber symbol. And so the tactic cards that have these symbols tend to be a little more potent, because this is two damage to one ship of my choice, which is great because that could kill the Rebel Transport, their biggest ship, right away. So I do all this damage, and I say, all right, done. Now the, the defending player has to take all of these dice and assign them to his ships. You can't assign more damage. Like I can't say, all right, all the damage goes to the X-Wing. Um, the X-Wing and the Y-Wing each have black hull, so this will have to go to one of them. I'll say the Y-Wing. The red die has to go to something with red hull, so that goes to the transport. Now, red dice are largely ineffective against just a, a fleet of X-Wings or Y-Wings because I wouldn't be able to put this anywhere, so it would be counted as a miss, right? But if they had rolled this... Now I can put it somewhere, and that's kind of the rule. If you can put it somewhere, you have to. All right. So, I, so right now I'll assign the red to the to this guy. Now this can go anywhere. This can go anywhere, and it has to go somewhere. So at this point, I have a choice. I can say, mm, all right, I want to. I'll put it on the X-wing and kill my X-wing, or I can put it on my transport and kill my transport. But it's going to kill. It's going to be because the transport has two health. Two health. If I had any other ship, I could put it on another ship. Or if the transport had three health. I could put it there and it wouldn't kill him. Because once combat is over, all the ships that survived are healed. So that's, you know, that's, it's, it's great to do that. But combat can last for multiple rounds and damage persists through the different rounds. So let's say 
I put it on my X-ray. Okay. Then I would mark my transport as having one damage. So we have these little damage things. So there's ones and twos. And you use these to mark what's actually no, I won't. I'll put it on the I'll put it on the uh, transport. He's he's dead. Uh, and I'll put this under the Y wing to mark that he has been hit. All right. And the reason, even though he, that's enough to kill him, because these small ships have one hull each, even though that's enough to kill him, I still mark it because uh, it's simultaneous, simultaneous combat. I can also shoot back even though I'm destroyed. And I might just, you know, that's why I want to keep one ship alive. In case I completely blow him up this round, then uh, the X-Wing will uh, win the battle. All right, so now it's the time for the Rebel player to, to shoot back against these two ties in the Gazanti. So we've got a black die from the X-Wing... A red die from the Y wing, no dice from the transport. So transports aren't very good, but they're useful for transporting stuff, right? And sucking up damage a little bit. All right, and so that's a terrible roll. Let's say I rolled, um, all right, let's say I rolled a red hit and a black anything. The red hit would have to go on the Gazanti because he's red, he's got red hull, but the TIE fighters both have black hull. I can either kill one TIE fighter or also put this one on the Gazanti, leaving both my main shooters here um, alive. I'd probably kill one TIE fighter, though, because the Gazanti actually has some pretty decent guns. The Gazantis are good ships. So, and that's how combat goes. Now, once that round is over, the Rebel player can say, all right, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to retreat, or I'm going to stay there. Well, actually, the initiating player, the, the Imperial player, would have the option to retreat. Um, but we also have to do ground combat. And ground combat works the exact same way. Uh, and you just keep going until somebody either retreats or everybody's dead. And then whatever's left wins. So that's kind of how combat works without going too much into it. In larger battles, it can become kind of crazy because you end up having a lot of stuff with little damage markers under it. Especially when stuff has a lot of hull. Um, now... Let's go back to leaders a little bit more in activations and, and, uh, and missions. Actually, no, I was doing setup, wasn't I? I wanted to do a little more. Hold on. Let's talk about starting the game. So we're basically set up right now. And the first thing that has to happen is we need to figure our starting locations. The Imperial player has the advantage of numbers. The Imperial player is going to start out with three loyal systems and two subjugated systems. And basically what you do is you start flipping over cards until you get start flipping over cards until you get three. Oh, by the way, this is the advanced rules for setup. Uh, if you go to the rule book, there is a, a first your first game. And the only difference is it tells you exactly where to put certain starting units. Whereas the advanced rules kind of randomize it a little bit. It's the only time you'll only ever play this the first time, and it's still using kind of the same format. Um, so the rebel players start here, here, and here, and the imperial players start here, 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 here. I don't, I don't like this way as much. I, I like to randomize it, but I did, the, I did do this for my very first game. The second time we did the advanced game, and it was way better. Um, so it just, I guess, it takes a little longer because you have to flip over a couple of cards, right? Flip over a couple of cards. Um, all right, so I'm just going to keep flipping over cards until I get three rebel systems. The first three rebel systems we get are going to be with the starting rebel places, where they're going to have loyalty, and they're going to get a, a handful of units. You know, like a, a Corellian Corvette, a transport, an X-wing, a Y-wing, some rebel troopers, a snow speeder, um, and they and they can put some of their stuff on the rebel base on one of their planets, but they can't divide it up amongst all their planets. The starting condition is they can only have stuff on one on one planet. And uh, so basically you can just keep flipping over cards until you get three rebel play. So in this case we got what, Mon Calmari, Naboo, and, uh, and Bafui. Bafu, where the Bafans come from. Alright, so those will be the first, we'll put right, loyalty there, uh, the Bafans, uh, Bafui, and, and the, and uh, Naboo. All right. So those are loyal rebel worlds. And then let's say I'm going to put half of my stuff on the rebel base and half of my stuff in Mon Calamari. 
to kind of defend it. But that's not the exact the the exact units you get are in the book. Like exactly how many you get. Um, but I just put a handful down for right now because that's I don't want to get too technical. Um, but and, and so that in the Imperial player you're gonna it's your first five Imperial planets, and there you're gonna have three that are loyal to the Empire and two that are subjugated. And the rules are you have to put um, at least one ground unit on every planet as the Imperial player. Then you take those five starting morals that you started with the Empire, all right, and, and you remove those from the probe deck. They're not in the game, all right? They're completely separated. Now the probe deck is ready to start, and then the Rebel player can now pick his base, his or her base. And let's just, for, for sake of argument, let's say I got these starting worlds, right? Maybe it wouldn't be these, and let's decide, and I'll put my guys out. And blah, blah, blah. And I start with three Star Destroyers and a bunch of TIE Fighters, too. Stuff like that. All right, so let's say I start out like there you go. You're gonna be spread out a little bit more because it's random and you can't use just any planet, but that's kind of how we start out. Okay, now you pick the base. And, well, so the Rebel player will pick his base. Now, now let's talk about the Rebel base. The Rebel base is a, is a mystery. We already picked one earlier, right? We said it was Hoth. Now, the only, now the, the only time that's going to, I'll force it to get revealed, is if I land ground troops. So, for example, let's say I fly a Star Destroyer through Hoth, and Hoth is a Rebel base. The Rebel player doesn't have to say anything. You know? Uh, now, if I had the Star Destroyer carry... And, you know, some ground troops, a stormtrooper and an ATST, and I dropped those on Hoth, which of course I would want to do if I uh, if I was flying through. Then, then that then I've, as soon as I land ground troops on a system, the rebel player must say whether or not it is the rebel base. If at any time I gain loyalty in a system, uh, the rebel player must say whether or not it is the rebel base. Now, it's much harder to just gain loyalty throughout the galaxy. The Empire has to, typically has to land, land ground troops first, and then force, has to subjugate first, and then play some other card to hopefully win loyalty. Then they can leave. But, it's dangerous, because then the Rebels can come back and snatch it up. Typically, what you want to do when you're playing this game is leave ground troops in as many places as you can. So... It's kind of this startup, kind of went over combat. Um, let's go over leaders and actions. Um, so I have my four starting cards, beginning of the game. All right, I'm going to start, I'm going to draw two cards. All right, so now I have my four starting missions and two more missions. Um, the rebel player will go first, and he'll, he or she, will take their cards. And you, this is where your leaders come into play. Because your leaders represent multiple different things in this game. Your leaders represent your ability to do missions, your ability to move units, as well as your ability to do combat. So, let's say I wanted to do two different things. I wanted to build, some, build an alliance and do sabotage. Uh, of course, I'm not announce, I wouldn't announce this to my, my opponent, but let's say I'm going to go one, two. All right, so I take the two missions that I want to do, and I can, you can do as many missions as you have leaders. As a matter of fact, you can even put two leaders on one mission. If you really want it to succeed, you can put two leaders on one mission, but no more than two. Typically, you don't do that, though, but, but you, you, are, you are technically allowed to. And let's see, is that a good one? Yes, build a lions. And sure, sabotage. All right, so I'm leaving two leaders in my leader pool. Now, it's always a good idea to leave some leaders in your leader pool. Almost always a good idea. Maybe the first turn might be the only time you don't, but uh, because they give you the flexibility to react to what happens on the board. So, but once a leader is assigned to a mission, they have to do that mission. So, you know, and then, so I say, all right, I'm doing two here and leaving two here. The Imperial player then can say, all right, well, I'm going to do, I'm only doing one mission, and I'm going to leave all the rest of my guys in my leader pool. And so the turn will begin. So now I have the option of, in, in any game where you have activations like Imperial Assault or Armada, 
uh, or something like that. These leaders, uh, every leader you have uh, basically represents an activation. So I get the first action. I'm going to reveal Leia and I'm going to say build alliance on Felucia. Now this card says attempt in any populist system, hence a hex. Um, if there are rebel units in the system, roll two additional dice. If successful, gain one loyalty in the system. So attempt, that's the first keyword. Certain, cer certain cards say resolve. They automatically happen. It's, a, it's an automatic success. But the cards that say attempt, and most of them say attempt, um, they, that means that they can be countered. So I put Leia in that system. That's where I'm activating her, right? It says it can be in any populist system. I could try Cato Neomoida if I wanted to. All right. So I put her there. I put her on Felucia. Now the, the Imperial player can either say, okay, that happens, or they can try to block. So in this case, um, let's say the Imperial player, I will try to block you. So Emperor Palpatine comes here and says, aha, Leia, I will try to stop you, right? Uh, he... To do that, he has to spend the leader token. It has to also go in the same system. And then now we look at the, the symbol at the top here. This is the diplomacy symbol, right? So that symbol is the yellow one. Leia has two of those symbols on her leader token. The Emperor has three of those symbols on his leader token. So Leia will roll two dice, and the Emperor will roll three dice. The color doesn't matter because the colors are the same. When it comes to missions and successes, the dice results mean completely different things. So, all right, let's shift. This is a, counts as one success, right? The hit blanks count as zero, right? The the explosion also counts as one success. The lightsabers for missions count as two successes. So these are super super awesome for missions. But in this case, the emperor rolled two successes. Leia rolled two successes. It was a tie. Ties always go to the person trying to block the mission. So the Empire would succeed in stopping the rebels from earning a token in Felucia. Uh, and then they stay there. All right, that was my turn. Now it's the Imperial player's turn. They can also reveal a mission like, hey, let's do rule by fear and try to turn one of these subjugated systems to a, uh, to a loyal system kind of the, and the, uh, the Rebellion's same version of that. Or, instead of doing that, I could maybe save that for later, I can play Darth Vader at, uh, in my Jido. All right. If I act, and this is, basically this is another way I can use a general in my leader pool, a leader in my leader pool. I can put him on one of these squares, and everybody adjacent to that system can now move into the system. So, um, let's say I just want to move my Star Destroyer here. Let's say I had a Star Destroyer in Toydaria, Rhodia, and Malastare. I activate Darth Vader, I can move all of them in, and this guy can, the Star Destroyer can carry this at, -AT. boom, drop him on Bof Wui. Whoa, I ground troops, is this the rebel base? Yes or no? Okay, in this case it's Hoth, so no. Um, and then I have troops on the ground, so I would then subjugate that system and subjugating a system that is already rebels puts that token on top of the rebel token. If I ever leave, it goes back to being rebel. Okay. Um, there's something called, uh, there's, there's loyalty points. There are certain cards that will say gain one loyalty or gain two loyalty. And I'm going to explain that really quick. A, uh, there's basically a, a three point spectrum. If I have, if I have zero, if there's zero loyalty for me in Mandalore, that means it's neutral. If I have one, that means it's mine, the Imperials. All right. If the Rebel player gains one loyalty here, that just brings it back down to neutral. If the Rebel player then gains another loyalty, that switches it to Rebel. Uh, if I have a card that says gain two loyalty, uh, I would probably want to do that on a Rebel, or, you know, on a system that's controlled by my opponent. Um, that would make it neutral, and then I could put mine on. So that's two points. So a, a point of loyalty as it applies to this game just applies to taking off a, your enemy's token and then putting your token back on. Um, all right. So, all right, I put Darth Vader there. I moved all these guys, right? There's a special rule about that, though. Once I've act, once I, if I have a leader in a system, I can no longer move units to or from the system. So 
For example, let's say I have a bunch of guys in Celest, and I think the rebel base is on Tatooine. So I want to go, you know, to Naboo, and then Rhodia, and then Tatooine. I put Darth Vader here, boom, move those guys. Well, now I can't put Taggy here and move them there again in the same turn, because I can't move them from the system that has Vader. Um, and similarly, if I play, I have all those guys in Celest, I play a mission in Naboo to rob the rebels of their support, I now can't drop Vader here and move these guys there because I already have a leader here. So you have to be very tacti uh, tactfully, tactically, you have to be very careful about where you put your, your guys during each turn. Okay? Uh, you start off with only four, so you only get four actions in the first turn, but uh, for the, at, in the first four turns you're going to be recruiting additional ones. Okay? So, we, we go back and forth, you move, you know, the rebel player moves his, moves some people, challenges me, uh, plays some missions, things are done, let's go to the end of the turn. At the end of the turn, what we're going to do is uh, basically go to the, into the refresh phase, where the first thing we do is we retrieve leaders. So I'm going to go and pick all my leaders and put them back on the board. And then both, both players will do that. And we should each have four. There we go. And if for some reason you played a mission that can't be played because it has no target, it's just like a waste. And like, for example, the Imperial player has stuff to capture rebel leaders that are, you know, co-located with ground troops. And you can't always, can't always do that because they might not play somebody in the right spot. So that would just be a waste. Um, but all right, so you return, all right, you retrieve all your leaders. You're going to draw missions. You draw two mission cards at the end of each turn, right? And then you have to discard down to ten. You have a maximum hand size of mission cards of ten cards. Now that includes these objective cards and these project cards as well. That also go into your hand. Uh, launch probe droids is the next step. The Imperial player picks two pro, uh, probe droid cards and gains some intel about where the rebel base is not. In this case, Rhodia and Endor. Endor is useful, right? <coughs> then the uh, rebel player gets to draw an objective card and have some plans on how they're going to try and get some reputation. All right, and then the. Uh, Let's see, then we advance the time marker. So then we'll go to the next turn and then do whatever is in the, on here. So we already talked about building. So for example, turn two is a both a build turn and a recruit turn. So we would all add up all of our stuff, throw, throw our ships on the track on either three, two, or one, then slide the track down and deploy our units. And we would also draw two cards from the action deck. Draw two cards from the action deck. You look at both of them. Right. You pick one to keep and one to put on the bottom of the action deck. Whichever one you keep, you can have one of those. Now, not all of them have two people on it. Like, this one only has one. This one only has Boba Fett. This one has Piet and Veers. That one's got, so uh, is it Mauler Mythil? Or, uh, you know. So, you, you pick two. You say, all right, well, this one has Boba Fett and, you know, this one has, you know, Captain Piet. I really want Boba Fett. So, I'll take that card. It goes into my... You know, and you're going to have these action, you're going to have like a little mini hand of action cards. And so like, right, that goes in my hand, and I'll have all three of these that I can play and hold on to for the rest of the, uh, the game. Um, speaking of action cards, I don't know if I touched on this, but we are going to start with action cards basically for your four leaders for the Imperial side. The Rebels have a couple of like droid-based action cards too, uh, like R2-D2 and C-3PO. You're going to kind of shuffle these, and each player starts with two at random. And then... During the recruit stuff, you're going to get some extra cards there. So, that's that. Um, so we're going to recruit and build, and then we're done. And then we start uh, we start the next turn. And you're just going to keep going turn after turn. Uh, the rebel player is going to try and stall or try to build up a force, maybe do some strikes, blow up a Death Star, gain some reputation for that, blow up Star Destroyers, get some reputations for that. Um, and... Uh, and the Imperial player's got to try and find the Rebel base. Um, a lot of times the Rebel base is going to be on one of these systems that doesn't, on the, one of these remote systems, because I'm a lot less likely to fly out and land troops on Ilum. It's good for me to land troops on, like, my Jito, because then I gain some production by subjugating that system. 
All right. Um, so I'm already going to be trying to land troops on those type of systems throughout the game. So the remote systems are the most likely, plus they're far, they're far away. All right. Um, but then again, there's some cool strategy, and maybe I'll put the rebel base on Alderaan. It only gives you one stormtrooper, so maybe you weren't going to go out of your way to land troops there, and you never thought I would be that close. There's all kinds of cool strategy and stuff you can do with that. Um, you've got these cool rings also, like when you capture somebody. Um, like some, some people can, like, oh, like Chewie and Chewie, Chewbacca, for example, gets this Millennium Falcon ring. Um, the rebels can start with, like, an R2D2 or C3PO ring, and these are just modifiers. Um, like or, or the Emperor can try to take control of somebody uh, and, and, and what they do is they go over the, the little mat or the little plastic piece here and and they stay like that and so that's a way to just identify one leader as being specific in one way or another and there I'll let you find out for yourself what all of those do but they're all very very cool so I think that's about it that is Rebellion and I, I probably got something wrong or probably missed something. So um, let me know what your questions are. Let me know what you, uh, what you think and what you want to see next. And as always, thanks for watching. And like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> All right. Take care. Yeah.